Geometry reveals some beautiful mathematical relationships, especially when it comes to angles and basic shapes. Angles are just a measure of rotation. We can measure them in degrees, with a full rotation being 360 degrees. There are some nicknames for angles of different sizes. We start at 0 degrees. Acute angles are less than 90 degrees. A right angle is exactly 90 degrees, or one quarter of a rotation. Obtuse angles are bigger than 90 degrees. A straight angle is a half rotation, 180 degrees. A reflex angle is bigger than 180 degrees. A three quarter rotation is 270 degrees. And we end on a full rotation at exactly 360 degrees. We can use this knowledge of degrees to work out angles around a point. They all need to add up to 360 degrees. Say these three lines meet at this point. If you know the angle between two of them, you can work out the angle of the last segment. If the first angle is 45 degrees, and the second angle is a 90 degree right angle, then the third angle must be 225 degrees. Let's look at a similar situation involving two parallel lines. If we draw a third line right through them, we can see some relationships. The alternate angles are always equal. These corresponding angles are equal also. See how the angle seems to repeat itself and everything changes together? These co-interior angles add up to 180 degrees, a straight line. We can see that if we drew our third line like this, then both would be 90 degrees. As this line rotates, one angle gets smaller at the same rate at which the other angle gets bigger. There's another shape connected to that half rotation amount, 180 degrees. Every triangle you could ever think of has three sides forming three angles, and these angles always add up to 180 degrees. Let's look at this equilateral triangle, so named because all sides and all angles are equal. From this fact alone, we can tell that each angle must be 180 degrees divided by 3 equals 60 degrees. Again, with this tall skinny isosceles, it has two long equal sides, and so these angles at the bottom must be equal. If they were both 70 degrees, we can say that they both add to 140 degrees, making this angle 40 degrees. Now imagine if we cut that triangle in half, down the middle. We'd have two right angle triangles. See how these angles are 90 degrees? Let's focus on this half. It's a brand new triangle. So its angles must add to 180 degrees. Well, this angle is still 70 degrees. We know this one is 90 degrees. And that 40 degree angle from the bigger triangle got cut in half. So this one must be 20 degrees. Add those angles up. 180 degrees, right? And if we had a line extending out this way, we'd know this angle on the side. It would have to add up to 180 degrees too. It's a straight line. If the little one is 70 degrees, then this new angle must be 110 degrees. That's pretty easy, huh? Remember, angles around a point always add to 360 degrees, a full rotation. Angles over a line always add to 180 degrees, a half rotation. Both the alternating and corresponding angles formed by parallel lines are equal. The co-interior angles add to 180 degrees. The angles inside a triangle also add to 180 degrees.